Hi, welcome to my channel and to my Pimp Me Shoot Show. Today's guest is the Chiapa Little Badger. This gun is fairly accurate and it should, it's only a single shot. However, there are some deficiencies you need to be aware of. One are the sights. It's those cheap plastic sights. They're totally unreliable. However, I don't use them only during emergency. I use red dots, so that kind of take care of that. Number two, is the handguard. It's those rails that's here, uncomfortable to hold, and it's way too close for me. My hand is usually over here. So I made myself a handguard uh, from a crutch uh, and with a 10 inch rail attached to it. I don't need to talk too much about this because it's already in my video called The Day of the Jackal, which I'll put a link in the description. So today, I'm going to show you how to paint this black. Number four is that when you keep opening the barrel and the receiver, um, it kind of, the screw tend to unscrew and tend to wobble a little bit. And that's why they put in a locking washer, which chews up the alloy receiver. So I replaced that locking screw with a wave screw which is less destructive. And I make sure that this is tight before I start to shoot. Number five, uh, my grip, I'm not used to shooting. This is an uncomfortable grip, and I'm not used to shooting at this position. So therefore, today I'm gonna show you how to install a AR-15 pistol grip. Number six is the stock. Uh, I don't mind the wire stock, uh, it's nice and light, however, I find that these two wires are too close together and could wobble if this receiver is loose a little bit. And therefore, it's like shooting with your feet together, it's just too close. I like to see these two wires apart a little bit more. Plus the fact that these two wires actually don't connect because of this plastic butt, butt plate. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a butt, a butt stock that's connected as one piece. So even if this separates, it's still sturdier than having two separate pieces. Okay, so, um, so what you do first is that remove all the rails, okay, and draw an outline on a, um, it looks like 5 8 uh, inch uh, plywood. You can use plywood or board and draw it like this. Okay. What you need to do first is to make sure that you make sure that this wire stock is adjusted to your iron sights. Iron sights. Make sure it's adjusted. So if it's too low, remove this butt plate and bend these wire stock higher. If it's too high, again, you can bend individually first lower and then put them together but first you need to adjust the stock to your iron sights okay once you've done that draw an outline on this plywood okay like this as you can see for me i find that stock is a bit short so i like to add an inch i don't want to add too much because it kind of defeats the purpose of the full foldability of the uh, gun. So therefore, I just drew another line, an inch. So my new stock is going to go up to this thing. Okay. And uh, so this is the outline. You need to draw this out because I need to bend the wire to the same position. Okay. And then I'm going to make a cheek rest that is adjustable to whatever height uh, that I'll be using. So I'll set that up and I will be actually first I'm going to do is show you how to paint this handguard. That's my first thing I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how to you know modify this to make it fit and then lastly I'll show you how to make the, the stock, the wire stock. I'll be back. Let's paint the handguard, and uh, before you paint, you need to sand rough the surface up. 
use the 400 grit paper and, and after you uh, rough the surface um, clean it with solvent uh, make yourself a from a coat hanger a device like this what you'll be using the device for is to insert it in like this okay so you can actually hold it and turn it around and it'll be a lot easier to paint okay uh, before you spray the paint itself you have to use a primer because uh, paint does not stick to metal really well and so primer does primer sticks to metal quite well and then the paint sticks to the primer so Shake the can really well before you start spraying the primer. Now lift this up. Uh, also the coat hanger is that after you uh, finish spraying the primer, you will hang it up. Okay. So Now when you start spraying, you start about two inches before the um, handguard and you end two inches after the handguard. Okay. Let's do a test spray and just go evenly like this like that continue to hold that like that after two coats of primer, let it sit overnight, and then I sprayed two coats of Rust-Oleum Flat Black. And uh, one more note, when you make the coat hanger, do not put the hook, because when it came through, it kind of ruined the edge. So just make it straight. And now I'm going to be doing the third coat. Okay, shake it. Make about 12 inches from uh, your item and you just spray it across. Like that. And that's it. Next is the grip. It's an AR15 grip. It's the OEM grip, not the airsoft. And the OEM grip has a gap of half an inch between here right here and you need that half an inch because it fits into this rail right here what you're going to do is you're going to put a groove a v-shaped groove just below the top like this one on each side like that and create a v-shaped groove go right to the back but not all, all the way through okay and the reason i'll tell you why because when you slide this grip into this rail you're gonna stop about a quarter inch from the trigger guard and for me it's comfortable at this distance any closer my fingers will be quite uncomfortable so this is the reason why I want to stop right here there's another reason why it needs to stop right here is because okay now some of you may not want to do the handguard some of you might not want to do the stock my stock but you just want to do the grip that's fine if you just want to do that then you might also want to put a fairly deep cut in the grip okay take a good look it almost about half an inch from the uh, this uh, finger uh, protrusion and you also need to cut a little bit back here and the reason why is because is you when you fold it it'll, your barrel will fold into the grip see that nice hey eh? and there's another reason why I'm recommending you make those grooves is because I this will also allow you to use 
the same bag the one it came in and look it fits right into the original bag quite comfortably and that's the reason now if you are gonna follow me and do the handguard and do my wire stock then of course you don't need to do the bottom because uh, it won't fit because this would be way out this far and you're not going to be able to fit into the the grip okay now let's move on once you finish the cut up here for the grip you have to put in to secure it you put in a five as uh, m metric five screw into it and it fits right into this hole right there okay and put it through that hole right there. Use a metric uh, hex uh, screw. I will uh, put the exact size in the description. Okay, now once this is all done and you have made the outline on this board, okay, and my original intention is to make the stock for me uh, an inch further out to be more comfortable and I might still do that and uh, and so but I want my wire stock to go from this point out to here straight down and then come back as you can see these dotted lines and then come out and screw onto the bottom here okay so if I remove this this is where the lower wire is It'll go straight across. It's parallel to the barrel. It goes straight across. And this is the original. I'm just going to go out about an inch. And then I'm going to go straight down. Then parallel to this wire. Come back out in line with the bottom of the grip. Basically from here goes out, down, and then come back. And then tie it to the bottom of the grip. So now where do I get the wire from? I went to my local hardware store and they had a quarter inch steel rod, five foot long, four or five dollars US, or six millimeter. Okay, so they're fairly cheap. I just did my first bend, the top one, uh, bend it to 90 degrees. I uh, heated the joint, this corner here, with a propane torch. And then I use a three pound hammer. I pounded it straight. Okay. Make sure it's uh, level up and down on the vise. And use um, aluminum, um, uh, you know, uh, just to protect the rod. Okay. You don't want the rod to be all marred up. I mean, it, as it is, it's going to be marred with the hammer. So you might as well reduce the amount of. Uh, scratches on the rod. So here I'm ready to remove it. Okay. Okay. So this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, it looks like I overbend it a bit, but I can easily pull that back out. And the next step Let's see if I can do it right now actually yeah a little bit better okay so my next muscle market my next bend should be right about here don't go right to the edge because as you can tell it uh, when you're bending it it goes up a little bit, uh, about one eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to go about lower by one eighth of an inch from the bottom of that. So um, that should get me to that line. Okay. Now this is the lower uh, part of the, the thing. And where is the mark? Uh, do I see it? Where is, I see it right here. Okay. 
Okay, that's where I set the mark. And now I'm going to heat that part. I'll heat it outside. And then I'll hammer this down. Now when you're hammering this down, try to hammer in line with this upper part of the rod. So when you're trying to hit it, try to line this up parallel to this. Okay, I shall be back. I'm done with the lower bar. And uh, as it turned out, they weren't exactly straight. So what I had to do is clamp it down again, like this, and uh, heat it both corners, slide in these copper uh, tubes, like that, and then I twist them till they were parallel. And it right now looks pretty good. So I'm going to remove it. It's still hot and I'm going to see how it looks. I'm going to cool it off with this wet towel. Hey, and it looks pretty good. Okay, I might have to bend this down a bit. And uh, this part has to bend up a little and I'll have to thread that. And then this part, I'm going to have to um, bend this in into the grip and then uh, attach it from the inside. I am done with the metal part of the stock. This is what I did. This is the original OEM uh, stock. This is what I did and I put a bend on the threaded part because that's has to go into the receiver and first because this is a quarter inch I couldn't use a 6M by 1 die I had to use a M7 by 1 die and I threaded it and then I file off the thread okay then after that I could use an M6 by 1 die and then after I finish threading that with the M6, I flatten one side, okay, and that's how it fits into the receiver. And also, I made the bend here into the grip, and I cut out a notch for it to fit inside like that. Okay, and therefore, I drilled a hole through that with a 3 millimeter drill hole, and I used a 3 millimeter hex screw to hold it with, to the grip. Okay, and then I bent a U shape like this. And because this is a quarter inch steel rod and not a, not a six millimeter steel rod and this ammo holder is designed for a six millimeter, I had to cut a straight line through here, right, as you can see, straight line so it would fit into the quarter inch rod like this. I want to reuse this ammo holder and this is where it goes it goes right in here and I also cut a groove at the bottom and a groove on top both of them and this is where it's gonna sit it's gonna go in like this and it's gonna basically hold itself like that okay and it's going to be held in place with the cheek rest that's going to be here. And the cheek rest is going to be made of ABS pipe. It, this is one and a half inch. And I cut a straight line down here. I'm going to bend this into a adjustable cheek rest. And it'll slide up and down on this. Because this is a bigger piece, I waited 15 minutes. And all I'm going to do is flatten it out. 
pretty soft and all I'm going to do is open her up and flatten her up like this like that the cheek rest has been in there for another 10 minutes after I flatten it out and I'm going to put that in over this this sheet that measure about a quarter inch that's the same thickness as the uh, steel uh, rod so I'm just now gonna put it over here and then I'm gonna clamp it down I'm gonna open that up Sandwich it right between these two pieces. A little awkward. Okay, I got it. Okay. I am done. I think I did a very good job with the wire stock and um, what I try to achieve is the look of the Smith & Wesson M76 or Car Gustav M45 wire stock and uh, I think I did a pretty damn good job. Okay I know those two SMGs have folding wire stock and the reason why uh, this isn't is because I'm not allowed to do that with this uh, rifle if I did that it would fall under 26 inch in length and therefore it would fall into the restricted uh, category and I didn't want that also in Canada uh, I cannot have this wire stock on a quick release uh, that would uh, be no a no-no so be warned for uh, some of you guys out there that's putting quick release stock on your uh, little badger. Okay, so going back to the deficiencies we're trying to rectify, and in doing so, we improve the ergonomics of this gun. The first deficiency is the sights. Okay, the plastic sights, they're really no good. And what I did is I got rid of the rear sight and uh, what I would be using is the groove on this rail along with the front sight and so that's what I did that's what I'll be using and in this place of the rear sight I'll be using a an LPVO scope that uh, magnifies from uh, one and a quarter up to five and I had to put this scope on a rail riser, three quarter inch rail riser. And the reason why is this scope interfered with the hammer. And I know there are accessories, extensions for the hammer, but they're not available in Canada. So uh, therefore, I use a rail riser, a three quarter inch rail riser. And this rail riser has a, I guess it's a groove that I could see through and uh, still continue to use the iron sight. So that was the uh, good thing about this rail riser. So I'm gonna put this on. Okay. Okay, so the next deficiency was the the real small handguard that was here, the OEM handguard. It was really uncomfortable to hold, and uh, I'm, I made myself, I modified a crutch, and I made myself a 10 inch long, 10 inch long handguard uh, with a 10 inch long rail above it. Now, and it's far more comfortable and more useful than the previous uh, handguard, OEM handguard, and I could, if I wanted to mount a five and a half inch bottom rail to this and I could uh, attach a vertical grip if I wanted to but I really didn't have time so I might do that at a later time but just in case if you guys want to see what it looks like I think it looks
pretty good with the vertical rail. Okay, another deficiency is the uh, the grip. It, it kind of had an awkward grip that I'm not used to. So I wanted to use a vertical, not a vertical, a pistol grip. And so I used an AR-15 pistol grip. And uh, I attached it to that rail that was below here. And, uh, and as you can see, and I can still fold it, but obviously it's not going to be as compact as before because of this handguard doesn't fold into the pistol grip. It's too wide, but that is the disadvantage because I, I wanted it to be more comfortable and more useful to handguard. So that's what I did with the grip. I made it into a pistol grip. And lastly, the deficiency was the wire stock that was here. <clears throat> it was a two-piece wire stock that didn't attach and uh, quite easily to wobble. And on top of that, the two wire stock was only about an inch apart from each other. So I kind of moved them to about four inch apart and it's in one piece. So it's more, more solid than before. So it uses one of the existing, um, uh, I guess, a, a point, and then it ended up at the bottom of the pistol grip. And it goes in there, and it's secured by this screw, a three millimeter screw. Okay, and as far as the butt plate concern, I used a, <clears throat> a fuel hose. You can get this from any automotive uh, uh, store and it's a internal uh, diameter is a quarter inch and it's two feet long and I just cut myself a four inch long piece sliced one end and I'll just slide it right in <clears throat> like that and this is gonna be my my butt butt plate yeah I didn't want it anything too complicated I just wanted something nice and simple and if you're not going to use a scope or an optic then you might want to use the balance of this hose for a cheek rest that'll be more comfortable than putting your cheek on this wire so, so that's what it is okay since I'm using a scope and I have a riser a real riser, three quarter inch. Obviously, this stock is much too low. So I made myself a adjustable cheek rest. And this is it. I made myself a U shape and I reused the ammo holder. Okay. And, and it goes right about here. And it actually you just push it in that's it and it stays in place it's very simple you just push it out because it has groove in the bottom for the bottom uh, rod it has groove on top and it just uh, basically sits on these stock and just snap it in place like that and another piece that holds it is of course the cheek rest it's an adjustable cheek rest and it snaps in like this and it's held in by these screws and it, when it clamps down when I tighten the screw 
it holds the whole contraption together so it, there's no way it, it falls off. To tighten it in position. Okay, if I was just using an iron sight, this is where the um, the position of the cheek rest would be. And because I got this uh, LPVO, I'll just have to move this cheek rest higher up like this. And I gain one whole inch by pushing this up. And now I completely tighten this up. And there it is. What do you think? Looks pretty good, don't you think? The show is very good. Remember, I added added an inch and a half to the uh, butt LOP, and it's. It's very comfortable. So, there it is. How to uh, rectify the deficiency and improve the ergonomics of the Chiapa Little Badger. Thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe.